What's going on everybody? I am Beef Stew and for those of you who actually watch the channel, all 12 of you, uh, you know that we have a powerlifting meet coming up. So what I want to talk about today is what to bring with you in your bag in order to make sure that you have everything to be successful at your powerlifting meet because that shit's important. We're going to divide the topic into four sections. One is what you need for the entire meet day. This is shit that you're going to need throughout the entire day. Uh, what you're going to need for your squat, what you're going to need for your bench, and what you're going to need for your deadlift. Uh, number one, you need a backpack. Number two, you need your membership card. Number three, you need your singlet, your t-shirt, your undies, uh, socks, ammonia, and food slash water. Keep in mind that a majority of this is, may only pertain to the USAPL, which is the federation that I compete in. I can't necessarily speak for other federations what you're going to need but we'll get through it. Number one, a backpack. Now what you want to consider with the backpack, notice how it is not very big. It is small and it doesn't take up a lot of space. And a powerlifting meet, if this is your first one, you're not gonna know what you're getting into when you first go out into the warm up room. And a lot of people, you know, it's fucking cramped in there. There's people rubbing elbows with one another. There are, there's not a lot of room to work. And so what you don't wanna do is be the guy who brings in a huge, bag and just have your shit explode everywhere because you don't want to be that guy you need to keep it small not taking up a lot of space and you need to have it all in like one little central location to where you could keep track of shit when you need your shit so one small backpack jansport that's what i use and we're gonna make sure that everything fucking fits right in here nothing more nothing less okay number two what do we got membership card for the usapl in order to compete for that day, uh, you sign up for the meet, and then when you get to the meet, you need to prove that you're actually a member of the USAPL. So, whether it be on your phone, or whether it be on whatever, you need to have a copy of your membership card, whether it's printed or on your phone. Otherwise, you will not be able to compete for that day, and that is a dumb way to waste your time traveling and meet expenses and all that. Don't forget your membership card. I like to put that right in the front pocket singlet okay uh powerlifters if you don't know and it's your first powerlifting meet powerlifters compete in what are called singlets they're these like weird unitard things that don't really make sense and they're not sexy at all but this is my singlet i've had it for all five meets there are many like it but this one is mine Know the rules if you're competing in geared, if this is your first meet, you need to know the difference between geared powerlifting and raw powerlifting and the difference between the singlets. I am competing in raw powerlifting, so this thing offers no support at all. It's just a way to cover up my body when I'm competing. This doesn't actually need to go in the backpack because I'm just going to wear it when I go to the meet to check in and weigh in, so it'll be on my body. A t-shirt. Ba -ba -da -da -ba -da -da. Look at this super dope t-shirt that you could get off of redwoodpowerhouse.net. Um, gonna support the cause. It's cool if you go to the meets and you wear a t-shirt that is all about the gym that you lift at or anything like that. People think that's cool and they're like, hey, what gym is that? And I'm like, Redwood Powerhouse, bitch. Again, same thing as a singlet. It doesn't need to go in the backpack because you're gonna be wearing it when you go to the meet. Undies. Check. Hmm. Hmm. Not sexy, people. Not good looking at all. Um, yeah, so there are rules as to the specific type of underwear that you can or cannot wear. You need to go on the website, check those rules, and make sure that your underwear actually fits those guidelines. These do. And again, not very attractive. Singlets and powerlifting, you're not meant to look good that day. Again, with the t-shirt and the singlet, I will also be wearing the underwear on my body when I go in to check in, so I don't need to put that in the backpack. Socks. So these are not knee-high socks. We'll get some more on that later when we talk about the deadlift. But these socks are appropriate for your squat and your bench if you do not want to wear knee-high socks for your squat and your bench. We'll get more into the different types of socks that you need for the deadlift later. Ammonia. If, if you have never tried ammonia before, do not try ammonia for the first time at your first powerlifting meet. It will destroy you and you won't know like what you are doing. I keep my main ammonia in this good, good can. I will have the good, good can ready to go. Ooh, ooh. 
I will have my good good can ready to go and my vehicle. I'm gonna make sure that I get there early to make sure that I have a good parking spot. You don't need to use those capsules, which is what I have in there. Here, I'll show you how they work. <coughs> See the little one hit wonders, All right? They always pack the same exact fucking punch every single time and they always smell great and they always get the job in, done. Job done, I meant to say job done. Um, Skull Smash is one type of ammonia inhalant that comes in bottle form. The other one is what's called nose torque. All of these are really common to see at a powerlifting meet. The USAPL, for whatever reason, doesn't like you sniffing them on stage because grandmas think that you're doing drugs. You're not. You're just smelling ammonia. Um, these go stale after a while. These do not, which is why I rock with these. And the cool thing about this is... When you're getting ready to do your attempts, you could just take four or five of them, stick them in your sock, and you're ready to go. They're right there. You could pull them out. So this is how these work. You crack it. <coughs> Woo! Last thing, I don't actually have any of them to show you, but you ha need to have food and water ready to go. All you need to stay hydrated throughout the day, and in between your individual attempts, there's usually a lot of downtime. So you need to have either bring food with you or know where you could go get food in between your squat, your bench, and your deadlift. So um, your first lift, and it will always be the first lift, no matter what powerlifting meet you go to, uh, is gonna be your squat. So individual things that you need for your squat are going to be your belt, your squat shoes, which there are different types of shoes you can wear, uh, knee sleeves and optional, some people wear them, some people don't when they squat, are wrist wraps. Uh, first item on that list is a belt. Much like the singlet, you need to check on your USAPL guidelines or whatever federation you lift for. You need to check on the rule books and make sure that the belt you are using fits the specifications of what they allow you to use. This is my belt. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Next up, what you need is squat shoes. And I'm going to be right back because I forgot to grab the other shoes. And so I'm going to go grab the other shoes and explain the difference. Okay, I got them. So we have squat shoes, and these are specific for squatting. And then we have powerlifting shoes, most commonly referred to as Chuck Taylors. Chuck Taylors have a long history of being like the most used shoe throughout the sport of powerlifting. Um, and then these are typically referred to as Olympic weightlifting shoes, which are legal in competition. You are allowed to wear them. Um, I would only recommend using these for your squat or your bench. You should know, by no means necessary, use these for your deadlift. Chuck Taylors, on the other hand, are completely appropriate for all three, okay? The reason why you will use these for your deadlift and not Olympic lifting shoes is because this is a wooden block in there that is not going to move and it raises up your heel an inch off the ground. These, if you feel down in there, it's maybe like half a centimeter thick. Like they're thin, they're very thin. And what that means is you are actually going to be closer to the ground so you will have to move the barbell less distance when you are deadlifting. Long story short, you could wear multiple shoes throughout the day if you want to. I like to wear these when I squat because I like the way they make me feel. It's much more of an individual lifter to lifter basis. Uh, be prepared to bring multiple shoes if you wear different shoes throughout the day. Um, those are the two pairs of shoes that I wear. I wear these for when I squat and I wear my Chuck Taylors for when I bench and when I deadlift. Next on the list for the squat is knee sleeves. These are the Mark Bell ones appropriate to wear in USAPL competition. Um, there was that big news recently that Mark Bell actually got all of his knee sleeves approved except for the ones with the grippy slippy thingies in them. Um, more commonly used in the USAPL, I would say are SBDs. Um, it's a matter of going on your federation's website, checking out what sleeves they actually allow. Um, it's gonna be a case by case basis, people. Um, these are the ones that I use and I've worn these in competition many a time. Uh, these are actually the tightest size that I could get onto my body. I've got a size that's a pet, it's one size looser for when I, God, I'm losing my tongue. I'm losing my tongue right now. They're one size looser for when I'm actually like working out, but these are the ones that I wear in competition. So these are the ones that I'm bringing. These go in the backpack. Bam, fit like that. Okay, 
Uh, optional if you some people like to wear them in the squat because it makes their wrist feel better when they're like back in that way fucking back there position see how it like cranks the wrist I've never had a problem with wrist pain so I don't wear them when I squat but um, so you are allowed to wear wrist straps in the squat if you want to wear wrist straps when you're squatting you are allowed to do so um, more on what you definitely should wear wrist straps for on the next thing all right that covers the squat. So to reiterate, we need your belt, we need your squat shoes, and we need your knee sleeves. Oh, I never actually put the belt in the bag. When you're putting the belt in the bag, feed it through the loop, tighten it up so that way you can get it as small as possible, like so. And then shove that sucker in there. <coughs> it tastes bad. The squat, you need your belt, you need your knee sleeves, you need your squat shoes, if you're wearing squat shoes, if not Chuck Taylors, whatever shoes you squat in, and if you want, wear some wrist straps. What you definitely need for the bench are wrist wraps. When you have a heavy load on your bench, your wrist is either gonna go this way or that way. Having a wrist wrap, put it on really quick, will protect your wrist. There are no muscles in your wrist. Wrists are typically very weak. This protects it, so that way you don't wanna go this way or that way, and you just go straight and drive straight up into the bar. Can't recommend wrist straps enough. Get them for your bench. I like to put the wrist straps in the front pocket because they're small and they don't take up a lot of space. Pull your wrist straps up like so, little donuts. ho ho -ish. And I put them back up in the front pocket so they're ready to go and they're right next to my USAPL membership card. Another option for the bench, if you want to wear it, you should mess around with it. Don't try it on your first day when it's you're actually out there ready to go for the first time on a platform. Uh, Mess around with it in your training, see if you get used to it. You could wear a belt in the bench press. The rule is when you bring the barbell down, it's not allowed to touch that belt, but you are allowed to wear the belt in the bench press. Um, I like to wear it in the bench press, especially in competition, because it gives me the cue to breathe out and inflate my gut against that belt. So that way I have a stronger base, and a stronger base means you're gonna be more stable, which means you're gonna be able to move more weight. So uh, the belt's already in there, that's ready to go. Uh, and that's it. Uh, the bench is pretty small. We've covered the bench press. We need wrist wraps, which are put in there, and then we also need the belt, which is already put in there. The most important piece of equipment that you're going to use in the deadlift is one, going to be your belt. Everybody knows why you need a belt for deadlifting, unless you're Konstantin Konstantinov. Rest in peace, dude. Earlier, we were talking about socks, how for the bench press you could use... Socks like this. These are uh, ankle high socks. They only go up to about like... I don't know, maybe six inches up the ankle, not that far, but for the deadlift, competition rules state that you need a knee-high sock. Look how long these suckers are. The reason why you need a knee-high sock is because in a powerlifting competition, there could be up to 200 lifters who are dragging the bar against their shins. Uh, that bar gets dragged up against your shins enough, uh, you're going to start bleeding all over the bar, it's gonna scrape your shins up, it's gonna be disgusting. Um, and then people are going to start swapping blood and that's how HIV gets made and people get diseased because of that. So for sanitation purposes, you need socks in powerlifting competitions that go all the way up to your knee. Don't forget that people because that's gross. I'm not going to be wearing the socks when I first get to competition. I'm going to be wearing these. So these socks are going to go in there. I'm going to put them with my wrist wraps. That's kind of in the small, small stuff section. I forgot to put on the list that you need your right deadlift shoes because I don't put shoes on the bench. You do need to wear shoes on the bench, right? But deadlift shoes, you need a particular type of shoe in order to properly deadlift. And uh, two of those shoes can either be slippers, uh, Chuck Taylors, which is what I like to wear. Some people even like to use wrestling shoes. Look up on your Federation's website to look at the rules of what type of shoe you could wear for each of the lifts. Uh, find which is most comfortable for you and then put that in your bag. For me, I like to use Chuck Taylors when I deadlift. So I'm gonna write 
Chuck, Taylor, and then those are gone in the bag because I'm not wearing them when I show up. Got my Chuck Taylors. These are going on the main compartment because they're big. The other nice thing about Chuck Taylors is because they fold up like super small. And I think that about covers it. Uh, you have everything that you will need in here in order to be successful at your first powerlifting meet. And it doesn't take up much space. You're not gonna be the guy that walks up into the warm up room and has a huge fucking bag that just explodes everywhere. Everything that you need in this tiny little space. Oh. <sighs> Hey, look at that, I changed. Everything that is on this list that you did not see me put in that backpack, that is because that is what I'm actually going to be wearing when I show up to the meet, so I'll have it on my person. I got my singlet on, I got my super dope Redwood Powerhouse t-shirt where it pops out the chest so that way people can see the gym that made me so strong. I've also got the shoes with the socks that I'm gonna be wearing for my squat because that's the first one when I'm ready to go. All right, uh, if there is anything that I missed, let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out redwoodpowerhouse.net where you can buy t-shirts like this and tank tops for the ladies and coffee mugs so that way you can drink coffee in order to be awake when you actually go to lift. 100% of the profit from that goes towards bringing powerlifting to Humboldt County and moving it out of my garage so that way you can actually have a competitive powerlifting gym. Thanks so much for watching. I will let you guys know how we do in the meet. Woo!